Hey, a lot of people pay a lot of money for the home gym. Maybe under $1,000. But I'll show you how to get it a lot cheaper. Follow me. Just break into your neighbor's home gym. Guy's a prick anyway. Then it's free. Hey, what are you doing in my gym? You're not getting these back! Hey guys, Gluck here, and today we're gonna to talk about 10 items for your budget home gym in 2021 that you can get shipped to your door with tax for under $1,000. And that 2021 part is important because of with COVID and with the price of steel exploding, there are materials, there are articles and videos that were made in the past that explain how to do this, but some of that stuff's a little out of date because a lot of stuff is a lot more expensive nowadays, which is where hopefully the ton of research I put in comes in. I spent a lot of time on this. Now for these 10 items, I will give you a price range, kind of a low and a high range. We're all smart people. We realize that if we spend a little high on some of those items, you might have to cut some of the other stuff out or go lower later on. But these are not cheap items. These are items hopefully that you have for years to come and that you can build off of. I'm not gonna recommend something I haven't used before or something that you're gonna find three months later and say, this is a waste of $200, I wish I hadn't bought it. Now, all of our goals are different, so you'll have to use your own judgment to decide where you wanna go high or low or where you wanna make cuts. But you can get all of these items to your door for under $1,000. Now let's get to number one, and that's the barbell. I don't think anybody's going to argue the importance of an Olympic barbell in a home gym. It's something you're going to use most, if not every single session you work out. It's something that's going to give us a huge range of exercises that we can utilize. Our price range for a barbell is gonna be $170 to $250, which means it's gonna rule out specialty bars like a curl bar or a deadlift bar, but it's going to give us a very good general purpose barbell. Now, I'll show you at the end of this section, if we cheat a little bit, you can actually get an incredibly high-end barbell, which is something I've done in the past. But first, we'll start with my low-end pick, and that's the Beast from Cap. At around $170, it's as low as I would go for something that you're gonna use constantly and have for years to come. There are economy barbells from companies like Rep Fitness and Titan Fitness, but they're not barbells I'd recommend because they're too inconsistent in their manufacturing and their quality at that price range. I've seen some complaints about the knurling being a little bit aggressive and there being some metal shavings from the factory left in there or that come off over time. It has Olympic knurling marks and 110K tensile strength. It's got a shaft diameter of 28.5 millimeters which is standard for a general use olympic barbell and it's going to be the same as if you had an ohio bar like this one right here or if you go to the rogue echo which would be my top choice at this price range now admittedly the echo is really going to go over our price range at 255 dollars and by the time you tack shipping and handling on there you're looking at 300 dollars but it is a really nice barbell if you can drop a little bit from some other categories it has olympic knurling marks it's 190k tensile strength it's made in america and it's going to have less finish options. But the price trade-off is that it comes with a one-year warranty and only has one set of knurling marks rather than Olympic and powerlifting knurling marks. It's basically an Ohio bar, which is what this is, with those knurling marks missing and less of a warranty. If you want to not settle, there is another option. You can look at boneyard bars. The trade-off for a boneyard bar is that there's no warranty, but their price is often quite a bit less, putting us well within our $250 range. A boneyard bar is a rogue bar with some cosmetic defects, but no functional flaws. My Ohio deadlift bar is a boneyard bar, and I really can't tell what's wrong with it. Maybe there's a little scuff on the collars, but honestly, the quality of this bar is higher than some companies' normal standard. Now let's move on to our next item, which is your power rack. I don't think the importance of a good rack can be overstated because not only is it gonna give us a lot of versatility with things like a pull-up bar or the ability to store things on it or a landmine press or a dip bar or whatever it is, but it's also going to keep us safe, which brings us to problem number one, and that's the price. You cannot skimp too much on a power rack because of all the things it does. Our price range is $250 to $500, and as you can see, that's a bit of an issue because you could spend half of your budget on your power rack alone, which really could be a good option depending on your goals. 
Now on the low end of the budget, I would recommend the Fitness Reality 810 XLT. This is really gonna be your bare bones rack. It comes with safety pins, a pull-up bar, J cups, and has the ability to add some attachments to it later on. At $250, it's the low end of our budget. It's a two by two design, which is capable of holding up to 800 pounds. And most people would argue, I'm never gonna squat or lift 800 pounds. And while that's true for most people, that's not entirely the point. When you have a two by three or a thicker gauge steel or a three by three, it's going to give you a much more heavy duty, sturdy material for you to work with. Which brings us to our next rack, which is the PR 1100. Technically, this is also a two by two design, which has all your bare bottom essentials like safety pins, a pull-up bar, and J-cups. Where it's an improvement is that you're able to get a lot more attachments. Rep Fitness has a ton of stuff that will go on this like weight horns and dip bars and a landmine attachment. At $270 plus $80 shipping and handling, it's pushing us into the middle of that budget at around $350 total, which is gonna bring us to our next tier, which is the Titan Fitness T3 rack. Where this rack is an improvement is that it's a two by three design like my Rogue R6 rack, making it a little more sturdy and capable. It also has west side spacing, which is going to give you one inch spacing in the bench press region and two inch spacing in the squat region, which can be a really important convenience factor. The other nice thing about this rack is that for better or for worse, it's just a rip off of the Rogue Infinity series. Now that means it's gonna have all the same attachments. So I actually own a lot of Titan attachments I put on my Rogue rack, but Titan's gonna obviously make their own attachments that fit on their rack and they work pretty well in my experience. Now, I really tried to work to find a Rogue quality rack in this price range, but I just don't think it can be done. You can look at the Rogue RML 90 Slim, which is basically two Monster Light uprights bolted to your wall. The nice thing about this is it's Rogue quality, and you can eventually build off of it with Rogue Monster Light attachments or bolt an entire Rogue Monster Light rack to it. But by the time you get it shipped with a pull-up bar, it's around $490, which is gonna push our budget to the max and you don't have any safety spotter arms, so I can't recommend it at that price. Which brings us to our next item, which is our benches. The nice thing about a bench is it gives you a nice place to relax or check your phone while you wait for people to hit the subscribe button. Go ahead, I'll wait. Two hours later. For benches, I'm gonna give you a pretty big price range, and that's because depending how you spent on your barbell or your rack, you might have to get a little creative. We'll have a lot of options for flat benches, and I'll give you one solid option for an adjustable bench. If I had to buy just one or the other and I had the money, I'd take the adjustable, but for a flat bench, most people can get by just fine. Now, our lowest end would be $55, and that's the Amazon Basic flat bench that a lot of people have recommended in the past. It's got a capacity of 375 pounds, and I realize most of us are never gonna lift that, but remember, as capacity goes up, the quality of the material and the construction often follows. At that price range, it's a heck of a deal, but I'm not normally a fan of benches with that T-style leg in the front and the back. It can get in my way which is going to bring us to our next bench, which is a Titan flat bench at $135. It still has the same style of feet, but you're upgrading to a thousand pound capacity and it has wheels on the back, which makes it really easy to move around. It's a really nice convenience. So you're not just picking the thing up all the time. Now, my number one choice, regardless of budget is actually this bench right here. And that's the Rep FB 5000. To me, I really can't upgrade it in any way, shape or form. Though at $190, by the time you ship it, you're probably pushing 230 plus. And if you want more information on this bench, you can look at my one year review of it, which I'll link up here right now, which brings us to our only adjustable bench, which is actually not this bench, even though I'm pointing it to it. It's from the same company and that's the Rep AB3100. It's essentially the AB3000 without the decline option. It's got a thousand pound capacity. The back can go in six positions and the seat can go in three positions, which gives it a lot of versatility. As I've said in the past, Rep's website really isn't very good when things go out of stock. You can't see the price. It used to be $190. And by the time you put shipping and handling on it, you're gonna go over that $230 threshold. But if you've made cuts and sacrificed somewhere else on your home gym, you may be able to afford it. Now let's go to our last and potentially also most expensive item, and that would be weight plates. I'm trying to recreate that scene from American Beauty, but honestly, it's not very comfortable, so let's move on. The problem with plates is they can quickly become the most expensive part of your budget gym, especially if you factor in shipping. Even companies that give you free shipping are obviously factoring that into the price. Now, if I were to get a set of plates, what I would do for a budget gym is probably get a set of 45s or 25 pound bumpers and fill the rest in with iron because that's the cheapest option. When it comes to the cheapest option for an iron plate, you're looking at something like a cap 
or a fitness gear from Dick's Sporting Goods. If you're looking on Amazon for things like plates or really anything, you have to realize that Amazon is a marketplace. So the vast majority of the time, Amazon isn't actually selling you the item. It could be somebody else. So you're gonna have to look to see who's selling it, which is why you'll see plates and other things vary so wildly in price. Fitness gear is a line you'd find at Dick's Sporting Goods, but honestly, I'd rather go with something like Titan Fitness because the price isn't that much different. And Titan's plates are gonna have a better finish and a 2% tolerance. So the weight on the plate is a lot closer to what it actually says versus other cheaper brands. And if you can't find Titan, you can always look at Rep Fitness. I had a full set of their iron plates, but I actually sold them off because I didn't like some of the inconsistencies in the quality of their finish or their diameters. Though price per pound in our current economy, if you can find them, they're not half bad. From there, you're gonna wanna look for bumpers. Like I said, if you can get a set of 45s or a set of 25s from when you're deadlifting or doing Olympic lifts, I think that's a really good idea. They're gonna naturally be more expensive than iron plates because of what goes into them. Now you can look for bargain items like Hulk Fit or Everyday Essentials, which are from Amazon and Walmart. Again, realizing that it's a marketplace and you might see really wildly fluctuating prices. If you're not having any luck finding those, I would go to a Rogue Echo Mill Spec. Rogue restocks almost daily. And I got a pair of 45s and 25s, which is 140 pounds for $290 shipped. You could also try the Rogue Flex, but they're real pretty, so they sell pretty quick. They're about $140 for a pair of 45s, plus shipping and handling, but they're really hard to keep in stock because of their style. Which would bring us to Titan Fitness's economy bumpers. You can get an entire set being 45s and 25s for $245 shipped. So price per pound and based on their quality, that's probably the best you're going to get. Now again, this can really add up. Ideally, and you can do this over time, especially if you're ordering from a company like Titan who doesn't charge shipping, so it's easy to tack stuff on later on, you'd want to get a set of two and a halfs, a set of fives, two sets of tens, a set of 25s, as many 45s as you need and you can afford, and like I said, bumpers if they fit what you're trying to do. Now let's get to collars. I'm not gonna insult anybody's intelligence by explaining to them what a collar does. We all know what a collar's purpose is, but I will say there's a difference in quality among them. If you wanna see in more detail, I have a video which I'll link up here where I go and deadlift with different collars on the bar to see how they perform. Now, when it comes to my budget pick, I would go to Clout Fitness. At $12, it performs a little better than most of those low range ABS lever system collars. And there are a lot of generic knockoffs, which I've tested as well, that work, but they're not gonna work as well as something like a Lockjaw Ollie 2 or a Pro 2, which is gonna have a lot more holding power and it's gonna have a better build quality. But at $36 and $42, you might be really pushing your budget depending how you spent. Now let's go into kettlebells. And for kettlebells, I would just go straight to Amazon Basic. It's a simple cast iron design with a decent coating and they're probably your cheapest option. A 50 pound kettlebell is gonna cost you around $70 and a 35 pound kettlebell is gonna cost you about $50. Now we're not talking rogue quality here. That's a little out of our price range, but you can always take this off your budget list right now and buy later on if that's something you really want. Next, I would go to resistance bands. So I use resistance bands all the time for obviously resistance work, but even for when I hurt my shoulder, I would use resistance band to work through different warmups so that I could bench without any shoulder pain and kind of rebuild my strength in it. That was a long time ago, but these things right here, which I've had for years, helped me through that, and now I can bench pain-free. Now, it's important to note, we're talking about pull-up resistance bands, something like this, rather than kind of your booty builder resistance bands, which I have both, because, I mean, come on. But here, we want to really focus on the pull-up bands because they're a little more useful. Now, my pick would be Canway, and that's the company I've had for a few years now. There are a ton of companies that make these, so if you pick somebody else, you want to make sure you don't go too cheap on them because they can break. And you want to pick one that's made out of natural latex. Now, currently, these cost $31, and I think that's a really good price for the value they add to your home gym. Now, let's talk about jump ropes. Now I can't find my jump rope, so I'm just gonna Photoshop it into my hand so it looks really realistic. But anybody who's used jump ropes know they're great for conditioning. If you've ever done double unders, they just destroy your shoulders in a good way. And for a budget pick, at around $10 to $12, I'd pick a PVC jump rope, like the Deagle or Degel. It's the most popular jump rope on Amazon, and you can adjust the length. If you want a speed rope like the one I have, but it's not currently my hands, I'd go with Wad Nation at $19 with really good ratings. It works incredibly well, as long as you're using it on a smooth surface so you're not chewing it up on concrete or something like that. Now let's take a look at our flooring. I don't really want to repeat my joke from the last video about flooring, even though I look super cute doing it. So instead, we'll just go right into the recommendation which would be a horse stall mat from Tractor Supply, which you can get for about $50. They're four foot by six foot, 
by three quarters of an inch thick and you can cut them to size. Or option two would be to build your own platform. It's super simple, anybody can do it. It's just horse stall mats with plywood stacked up underneath and you screw it together. At some point, I'm going to do a video about my platform, but I've been saying that for months and here we are. So let's go to our next item, which will be your mirrors. The first thing you might be questioning is, do I really need a mirror in my budget gym? And the answer is obviously, because that's why we're all here. You just wanna check yourself out and kind of like look at your butt and other things and like angle them perfectly and get the lighting right so you look really big. And to do that, you're gonna need good mirrors. And this is one of those places where you can look online and for other places because even with COVID, it hasn't blown up the prices of mirrors. I got that mirror for $20, it's five feet by six feet, and I just looked on Facebook Marketplace and the guy couldn't get rid of it. These ones are Glacial Bay from Home Depot. They're 36 by 60 inches and they cost about $55 each, though you can get a deal if you get more of them. Mirrors can be a really important safety thing so you're able to check your form as you're going through your lifts. And honestly, your form might be more important than the amount of weight you lift. Am I supposed to say that on camera? I'm not sure, but I've got a few quick tips to go through as we check some of these builds. Let's see how well I did keeping this under $1,000, but everybody's build is gonna look different. Another thing you can do is if you're gonna buy something from one company, try to buy it all at once because they'll combine the shipping. As you buy more and more things, your shipping as a percentage will become less and less. And even with COVID, if you check Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, you can get things secondhand that are gonna be cheaper than buying them new. Even with price gouging, by the time you put shipping in, you might be able to get a good deal. There are still some decent people out there. Or you can save yourself some money by getting creative or building things yourself, like the platform, or when I first started making my first home gym, my pull-up bar was actually pipes from Home Depot strapped to some rafters. I have a friend who uses closet doors he got from the dump for his mirrors. And another friend who built his own dumbbell rack and his own bumper plate rack out of two by fours. This video took me a ton of time in research. I really wanted to make sure I got you guys the best items you could get in this budget range. I hope I did you justice. It took me a lot of experience, a lot of trial and error, and hopefully you're not gonna make the same mistakes I've made over those years. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Did you whip it? <laughs> That's better, that's better. You sound good when you're over there. But behind the camera, you ain't so good. I can't get my bike enough. You're good. Looks comfy. It is actually not half bad. About. <laughs> Let me show you how. What was I supposed to say for you? What did you say? Hey. God damn it! <laughs> you said it. three twice. God damn it! Hey, what are you doing in my neighbor's gym? He might be a prick, but I'm here. <laughs>